One of the things that used to really aggravate me about toilet anxiety is that I'd be feeling okay. I'd be going about my day feeling normal and feeling okay and feeling like I can you know, handle the sensations in my body. And then I would need to go to the bathroom and I'd be okay still. I'd go to the bathroom and as soon as I walked in and kind of saw the toilet and like sat on the toilet and in that kind of cubicle if I was at the shops or if I was at home in the bathroom, sitting in there would trigger all those like same sensations that I used to have, trigger the fear I used to have. And the act of going to the toilet would cause a panic response in my body. And from there, I would spiral. If this is something that happens to you, I'm going to explain to you why this happens and what you can do to help it. Because it can be really annoying when you feel like you've done all this work to get, you know, to a good place with toilet anxiety. And then you go to the toilet and you feel like, wham, you're right back into the the midst of all the anxiety again. My name is Lauren. I talk about anxiety, panic, agoraphobia, and toilet anxiety. Uh, So welcome if you're new here. Now, one of the things to remember about our bodies is that our bodies are really good at remembering um, emotions, remembering behaviors, remembering actions. Our bodies are able to commit acts to memory that uh, help us to create habits. If we have a situation that causes a deep emotional reaction, so for example, say when you originally started experiencing toilet anxiety, maybe um, there was something that triggered it initially, like maybe you had some kind of experience where you lost control of your bowels or your bladder, or maybe you just had um, the thought of like, what if it happens? And that kind of started to eat away at you. But Basically, what happened is every time you were in the bathroom or around the toilet, you would have this emotional reaction that was pretty intense. So you'd be panicking, you'd be um, you know, questioning like, what if this happens? What if that happens? You'd be in this state of stress and survival. And when there's a strong emotional reaction, doesn't necessarily have to be a bad one. It can be a good one as well, like falling in love, for example. When there's that strong emotional reaction, our mind kind of takes a snapshot of our environment and sort of sears that snapshot into our memory so that if that were to happen again, we would be able to really quickly remember what the emotion connected to that was. Now, this can be a really good thing. It means that you can, you know, look at somebody you love and feel that really like visceral emotional reaction to how much you love them. Or it can mean that you can get triggered in a situation where you have had an extreme emotional reaction to something in the past. And so you can kind of relive those emotions in your body and relive that experience. And it can feel exactly the same as it did the first time. To add to that, if this is kind of an experience that you keep having, your body commits that to memory, to body memory. So you don't even really have to consciously think about it for your body to start throwing all those kind of feelings and sensations at you that you had the first time. I think this is why a lot of people develop panic disorder after having a panic attack because they have that strong emotional charge to that first initial memory of having a panic attack and their body and mind will have taken a snapshot of what was happening in that moment Say, for example, your first panic attack you had in a car. So your body will remember when I'm in a car, I have really bad panic attacks. And so you'd get in a car and your body would start throwing all those kind of alarming sensations and feelings at you. And then your brain will start thinking all of those panicked and you know terrifying thoughts of like, what if it happens again? And then it happens again because you have created such a state of tension and unease in your body and you have sort of whipped yourself into this state of fear without even really being consciously aware that you're doing that. This is what happens when you've experienced toilet anxiety, uh, whether you've experienced it for a long time or even just a short time. If there was that big emotional reaction to the initial sort of toilet anxiety experiences, You are going to continue experiencing those emotional reactions even when you feel like you might have gotten past it. So to take you back to the example I had at the beginning of this video, when I would go into a toilet, even if I was feeling okay, I would go into a toilet and then I would suddenly start to feel those panicked 
you know, emotions and feelings again, not because that moment itself was caused to panic, but because I was having that sort of throwback to that emotional reaction that I had in the past. And what happens then? This is the, the point of where we can choose two different parts. What happens then is that we start to have that reaction and we react to that reaction. So for example, you'll be sitting in the toilet and you start to notice that you're panicking and you think, oh no, not again, like what's happening? I thought I was over this, I thought I was past this, I don't wanna go through this again. When you have that response to that initial reaction that you couldn't control, then you start to go down the rabbit hole of creating more tension, which then your mind will respond to by throwing more of those tense and scared thoughts at you then your body responds to that by throwing more of those tense sensations and feelings back and you get into this cycle of feeling panicked and terrified. So what you need to do in that situation is you need to take the other route, which means instead of reacting to the fact that that panic is there as something alarming in and of itself, you acknowledge that the reason that panic and those feelings are coming up is just an emotional memory from the past. It's that memory of the emotional reaction that you had, you know, a year ago or two years ago or, or recently, whenever it was, you had that emotional reaction in the past, your body snapshotted that whole circumstance, that whole environment that caused that emotional reaction. And so your body is remembering in this moment, uh oh, this is where I initially had that bad reaction and so this is where I need to have that bad reaction again. You need to be sort of the responsible parent of the situation that comes in at that moment and goes, right, what's happening here is a memory, it's a snapshot of the past and all I need to do now is firstly acknowledge that and secondly remind myself that it's okay. I'm okay in this moment. And something that really helps me move into a good space when I'm in a toilet and I notice that I'm having that emotionally charged reaction to being in a bathroom, I remind myself that I'm safe, but I also start really pushing a feeling of love and appreciation and gratitude in my body and for my body. So I consider how intelligent it is that my body is remembering that past experience and and trying to keep me safe by bringing up those feelings, I really respect and acknowledge that, that that's what's happening within me and that, that that's actually a really, um, you know, intelligent and adaptive thing. Uh, and then I work on being really grateful for those feelings and that they've come up to try and warn me, are you okay in this moment? And I remind myself that I am okay. So bring in gratitude, bring in appreciation for your body, appreciation for the way your stress response works and just work with feeling grateful and um, thankful for the fact that that you're able to experience those feelings even after a situation has passed because it's supposed to be a useful and helpful thing for your survival. It's not supposed to be something that holds you back and it's your choice how you respond to that. So it's not necessarily your choice to have that reaction because that's just your body remembering something that happened in the past, but it is your choice to then respond to that reaction. I hope this video has helped. I hope you're all doing really well and I'll see you next time.